guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna talk about how to maintain your side hustle business. This is when you've had a side hustle for a while and then you've turned it into a business, which I talked about in the last video, and then now you need to do certain things in order to maintain your business. If someone sues your business or something happens, just saying that your business is registered isn't really enough to prove that it is in fact a business. There are a couple activities you need to do every year or every quarter that really validate that your business is in fact a business. They can also put you in the right mindset of this is my business and these are my personal assets and help you keep those separate. So let's dive into it. The first thing you're going to want to do, whether it's you're creating your business or maybe you do this every year, is you'll want to create or update your mission statement. Your mission statement is just the mission of your company. What does your company want to do? What does your side hustle want to do? Ideally, this mission statement is pretty broad, so that way you can do a lot of different things with your business, but it does need some focus, so it isn't just anything you want. My mission statement is Blondie Bikes LLC seeks to educate, empower, and inspire young women to embark on new experiences and careers that help them learn about themselves and the communities around them. So although most of the stuff I've done on YouTube and like with other partners has been very technical, this mission statement broadens the company so that if I want to create a new product that maybe doesn't have to do with something super, super technical and computer science-y, I can do that. Ideally, anything your business does lies within that mission statement or you can somehow point an arrow where this connects to this and then this connects to this and then this business activity whether it could be an expense that you did or a certain product you're putting out, it all ties back to that big mission statement. Your company should also have some core values. So these are things that likely you personally value as the founder of the company or as the founder of this side hustle. And it's gonna be things your company values too. It could be anything from integrity to innovation and making time for innovation. It could be about feedback and the importance of feedback and that is something that you as a company value. It could also be about giving back. So does your company really value community service and is that something that is really part of the day to day? These are things that you value on a day to day basis within your company. So the mission statement and core values, those are things that you create and then maybe you update every year. As a company, you can also write down some company preferred vendors. So when you are expensing things to the company, if there's one company you always use or a vendor you always use for a specific service, whether that's getting posters printed or there's a certain vendor you use for getting office supplies or a certain vendor that does hair and makeup for your film shoots or a certain vendor that you book flights with, all of that good stuff. That stuff you can also have written down as a company. These are our preferred vendors. It validates that your company is in fact a company. If you are someone that travels a lot for your side hustle or for your business, it might be worthwhile to create a travel policy for your business. For this travel policy, you you can just Google travel policy and one comes up and you can kind of copy everything from that paste it into a Google Doc, say this is my travel policy, and then edit the policies to where you feel like they seem fit. So does your policy require a receipt for every single purchase, or does it only require receipts for purchases over $100? Do you have a limit on how much you can spend per meal or per day? Anything that you would like to regulate for traveling with your company, that's something that you can write down in this travel policy. Even if the travel policy is very broad and doesn't give a whole lot of specifics, having one again validates your company as a company. As a business owner, I also have a separate email for business versus personal. So anytime I am corresponding with someone I work with, whether that's a vendor I'm working with or a partner that I'm creating courses for, it always goes through the business email. It's really separating those business and personal assets and purchases. With your purchases, you also might want to use a separate signature for your business versus your personal. And so you have a business signature that you use whenever you're signing something off for the business. This could be a contract, but it could also be something you're purchasing. And you'll have a separate personal signature, which is likely the signature you've always used throughout your life. Not only is the signature different, but if there's a contract and the contract says you as an individual, make sure you reach out and you say, hey, you know what, I'm actually a business, like can we address this to my business, Blondie Bites LLC, instead of me as an individual, and then at that point you can sign it as your business. This can really protect you in the long run. With these separate signatures, they're also going to be attached to separate bank accounts. And so you have your personal bank account, and then you're going to have your business bank account. And so a business bank account, you can go to your 
your local Bank of America or Chase or whoever and as long as you have the EIN and various documents that basically prove that your business is registered as an LLC, you can open a special type of bank account. This is not your personal checking and savings. This is a separate type of bank account and it will be attached to that EIN number and it will be attached to your business. And if you go to your local bank and tell them, hey, you know, I want to set up this special bank account. It's a business bank account. They will totally help you out. With those bank accounts, you're going to have the separate signatures attached to them. Now, me as an individual and me as a business owner, I kind of act like they're separate people, digitally at least. So I have separate emails for them, I have separate bank accounts for them, I have separate signatures for them. So I'll actually write emails to myself sometimes. So whenever I am paying myself and agreeing on a payment to pay myself, from my personal email I'll say, hey Blondie Bites LLC, for the next three months of work, for the next quarter, this is the amount I expect to be paid. Or this is the agreed upon rate for the next three months or the next quarter. As Blondie Bites LLC, I'll go over to my other email and I'll say approved and then send it back. And that whole email transaction, while it might seem silly, is actually really important because it validates that you are acting as an individual and you are acting as a business owner and it leaves a paper trail for your business. And so if someone looks into your finances or if you get sued or something happens and they need to look at your financials and they need to look at where you spent money and how you spent money, all of these different components further validate what your business owns and what your business does and the activities of your business first is your personal assets, your personal bank account, all of that good stuff. Speaking of paying myself, I pay myself from the business to my personal once a quarter. So I could put myself on payroll and I would pay a payroll service like 30 to 50 bucks a month to put me on payroll and to do all these taxes and stuff for me. But as one employee, I don't really need to do all of that. For payroll or for paying your employees, you can pay them directly and then pay estimated taxes on that. Or you can do this whole payroll system. With the one employee, I just pay myself directly. So I pay myself from the business to the personal using a Venmo, a Zelle, one of those, because obviously you can't just transfer the funds over, but something where there is more of a paper trail that has a memo or a note attached to it saying, hey, this is the payment for quarter one, or this is the payment for quarter two for your salary or for, you know, whatever it is. And then as the business, I go and I pay an estimated tax. So that's 15.3% of whatever I paid the individual. On the personal side, now I've received that money and the business is gonna take care of my 15.3% because either the business or the individual can pay that rate. Most companies that split, but if I want me, the individual to pay it, I could do that, but I kind of want the business to pay it, so I let the business pay the 15.3%. And then as the individual, I'll pay income taxes on that money coming in. As a business owner, you're also going to want to take care of accounting. Your business may have lots of expenses or it may not have many expenses at all, but having an accounting system can really help you keep track of your expenses and make sure every expense is valid. There's a bunch of different accounting systems out there. There's QuickBooks. I use Wave, and so Wave is kind of a newer one, and it's free. Another thing I do, which you don't have to do, but I like to keep track of the business activities, and so these are things that the business is doing. For me, since I create YouTube videos and courses on LinkedIn Learning, as well as stuff with other platforms, anytime I make a new YouTube video or I make a new course with LinkedIn Learning, I track all of those activities with a milestone document. So every month, I usually have like five to 10 milestones that are hit, whether it's deciding like, hey, we're gonna create this LinkedIn learning course, or here are the YouTube videos I've uploaded this month as a part of my business, or this is a new product I'm making and we did the drafts for it in this month. You could also break this down into quarterly if you didn't wanna do milestones every month, but keeping track of the milestones can again prove your business is a business. These are the activities our business did. These are the things we spent. This is the mission statement. These are the values and this is how it all ties together like it is an actual thing. Some people might also say that you want to have a shareholders meeting or a board of directors meeting every year. So a board of directors meeting, that's basically all of the directors coming together and appointing a new director. And so they'll say, okay, this person's a new director and 
that's the board of directors meeting. It's also held if there's a major problem in the company or there's a major shift in management. So maybe when you are acquiring a new company or something like that, or you have to let a bunch of people go, maybe you do this director's meeting. As a business with one employee, I don't really do that, but I have a document basically saying that I am the only board of director and it's fine. But if there's a certain change in your company, maybe you would write notes about what those changes were and you can title it board of directors meeting 2020 or 2021 or whatever. You might also have a shareholders meeting every year. And so this is the meeting where you talk about like what are the goals for this quarter or for this year and what are going to be the main focuses of your company? What are you going to invest in? So having a document with like your yearly focuses can really help guide where your content or where your products or where your overall focus of the business's activities are going to be. In addition to this, you're also going to have to do taxes every year. So depending on what type of business you have, you might have a tax return for your business itself as well as a tax return as an individual or it might be all on one tax return. So that was a lot. That's it for this video. Once you set up your business for the first time and really set up what your core values are going to be and your mission statement on all these different components, once you set them once, it's a lot easier to continue every quarter or every year because all of the really hard setup stuff is really done and now you can focus on the core of your business. I hope you learned something new in this video and I'll see you soon.